Do, 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 do. All right, hey, welcome to episode ten of Once Upon a Game. Uh, I am the yeah. host, uh, Eric, and uh, tonight I have my best friend here, Leafington. Uh, Leafington, introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Leafington, aka Paul, because that's my real name. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I, I live on the internet where I draw silly things. Uh, correct me, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Leafington, but isn't Paul short for Leafington? Uh, sure. Wow. Well, okay. I was just, I was just wondering. So anyways, uh, welcome to Once Upon a Game, uh, the variety game show where we, uh, create stories and then watch them, uh, enter the void of no return that is a black hole. So, um... In about three hours or so, uh, Leamington and I, we're going to just go from nothing, We're going and we're going to use the rules of a game called Microscope to create an elaborate and epic history of something uh, to be decided yet. And uh, the cool thing about this is that neither of us have any particular power, so I might be the host and facilitator of the game, but I don't have any more authority over what enters the game than Leamington does. This will be a shared kind of cool experience um and as always uh leafington and myself if we're uncomfortable uh with anything that one of us says even i guess you could be uncomfortable with your own suggestion but uh you know if if there's something that that disturbs you or you just do not want to cross that boundary uh you can just say no i we should x that out i'm not i'm not interested in that or even if you thought you were cool with it and then later on you're like yeah that's actually i'm not actually cool with that you you know that's fine too and like magic it's gone and you don't have to explain why uh it's just it's it's out of here because your safety and pleasure is my priority so leave it you cool with that buddy I am totally cool with that. Is that a, is that actually a system from the game itself? No, that is not a system of the game. That is like a meta okay. thing uh, yeah. that was showed me one time, and I was like stealing that. Yeah, yeah, like like it's totally like a thing that would like someone would design a thing and be like, all right, this rule is included because it's important to me. I'm just not sure where exactly like it originated, right? The, the totally. Thing, like that specific. Uh, that explicit um, about it in a game. Uh, I wish I remember who came, came up with it, but I think if you just, I think it's called the veil, is the actual okay. term for it. Um, I've always heard it as like the X card or the X rule, but I think yeah. it also goes by the name of the veil. Um, yes. So yeah, so uh, leaving tonight, we're going to play a game called Microscope, and Leavington, you have not played Microscope, correct? I've not played it at all. I've just seen it. Mostly okay. On this channel. Sure, sure. Uh, I am a big fan of Microscope, so that's no problem. Um, this will actually be my first time playing Microscope with two people, so this will be fun. This will be a nice little cozy endeavor. Um, so let's just switch over to the uh, Microscope screen, and what we're looking at are a bunch of text boxes. And uh, starting from the top is the high concept, and this will be the sort of like one or two sentence at most tagline that will describe what we're doing today uh, in terms of fiction. So, uh, Livington, any ideas about yes. what, what we should play Microscope about today? I mean, it has to be about a history, so it has to have a, a starting point and an end point, but how much time that takes up between those two points, that's up to us. So, yeah. Um, feeling any particular genre, feeling any like particular thing? Uh, I feel like um, maybe something a bit smaller scope because I think like I've seen a bunch of like large scope mm -hmm. stuff spanning yeah. generations. Um, so maybe like a, like we follow a person. Like yeah, uh, let's do like like a superhero, like the rise and fall of superhero that we still have to make up. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. All right. Um. Let's do we do we know like uh, a time like a sort of time in in, in you know like an era 
that we, we might want to do? I, uh, I, I don't really have a preference. Okay, uh, we can figure that I, out I, in, in the palette. Sure. Um, all right. Of a superhero. Yes. Just that, just nice and clean. The rise and fall of a superhero. Okay, cool. So let's, the next part is actually our bookends. So when will we start our game? What will be the period of time? So this would be like a chunk of time that's uh, anywhere from uh, a couple, actually, you know what, time-wise, it could be anything. Uh, it's just it's just a long, definable chunk of time that means that there's time for events to fall into it. Um, so what, um, it also has to be, I guess, distinctive. So what um what are, what are you thinking for when we should start? Should we start when he becomes a superhero? Should we do like his origin story too? Um, um what are you feeling? So I I think we can include the origin story. So it, it's like he's born mm -hmm. would be our start. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, well, hold on, hold on. That's important. That's saying he's born, because this superhero means he's born and not made. There'd be no radioactive spider bites in this one. Well, I mean, like right. Peter Parker was still born, right? And and yeah, like, but he was him, Peter Parker. Growing up with his aunt and uncle and stuff all happened before he got bit, and it's part of his origin story. So, so, like, I don't know. I think I think we can do it when he's born, or she's born. And they're born. I should say. I'm really bad at this. I'm sorry. No problem. When the um, <laughs> superhero is born. No, I was saying yes. that. Just when the superhero is born. And then what happens at the so end? It oh, is, and is this light or dark? Include. Is this um, uh, God, I feel like it's a dark period where he's born. So it's a light. Then, so it's actually light. And then he is born and makes things better, so it's light. Oh, I so guess then I, 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 that sounds like dark to me. The tone is dark. That the the world and everything happening in it is dark. Yeah, so. these are. This is like one thing of of microscope that I have a hard time like defining sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like what's light and what's dark. Yeah. It's um no, it's it's actually completely subjective. Uh, so these periods of time, they are subjectively light or dark. Um, it's mostly okay. just for for you and and me to communicate our just general feelings of tone. That's okay. it. So okay. So well then then let's start with dark. He's okay. Dark time. And when when will our story end? Um. Uh. Let Let's say it's his disappearance. Oh, and that could mean a number of things. So uh, we'll leave it vague, so we have room to play with. Yeah, no, so totally. So he could die. He could retire. Exactly. He could change. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the disappearance of the superhero. Yes. Dope. All right. Cool. Um. So let's go into the palette and. We will need to require us to nail down some of this setting and stuff like that. So, yeah. um, I'm thinking, oh, do I want to do it? I'm. I was thinking like, so I, I heard about this uh, Superman comic called Red Sun, where okay. Superman ends up actually being raised in Soviet Russia. So I'm thinking okay. about maybe doing a Soviet Union superhero. Uh, all right, all right. What are you thinking? Uh, I, I, I really didn't like think all that much but... about setting. Like, I, I guess that works. Uh, I, I guess the superhero genre in general is either like modern or or like semi futuristic. Uh, so I think I think like a modern fifties Russia, like height of the Soviet Union. Could we do a Victorian uh, England superhero? Ooh. Sure. Something uh, like, like I, something around the like the League of this. Extraordinary Gentlemen. You know what I mean? Like kind of like. I'm up for any of this. So you 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 pick what you like. I okay. like these ideas. All right. Um, I kind of actually like Victorian England. 
I want to do Victorian England superhero. All right. So I will do. Um, so uh, yes, nineteenth uh, century England. So I want to see some nineteenth century England stuff. All right. What are you thinking? Uh, let's see. Let's do. Uh, yes to. Uh, a super villain. Hmm. Um. Here's a question for you. I want to stipulate. Uh, or postulate I'm thinking I'm thinking no magic okay uh so some sort of like sciency based but what I don't know how do you feel about that do we actually want like uh, flying capes and stuff or could it be like Iron Man well that that's a that's a thing right like when when is a thing magic? Like it's super it technology. Magic. Yeah. Um, uh, so I I think we need to define what is magic a little better, for that to. No okay. no like spell casting. But weird science is totally cool. Okay. Um, so. No, I, I'm gonna say like no spell casting. Okay. Does that make sense? Or do, yeah, do we need to clarify I, I this more? What, what the what the difference is? I, I think I guess that superpowers have like a really specific thing they can do, and magic is like this general. Like I can make a fireball, but I can also make people fall asleep. Exactly. And and that would be oh, magic. Whereas uh, I can make a fireball, but that's literally the only thing I could ever do. It's my superpower. Do we want? That's okay then. Oh okay. Um. Yeah. I guess I guess the question is then: Do we actually want? Do we want legit superpowers? Or should I, these, I mean, or, or are we talking more like kick ass? You know what I mean? Uh, all right. Like if you're into no magic, then let's do like like kick ass. Just like uh, I, I'm not I'm not necessarily top, into it. I'm I'm just postulating. Or, or or augmented humans is okay. Yeah, like I'm cool with I think like weird science. So like someone like Iron Man or Captain America would be fair game. You know yeah. what I mean? Okay. But not okay. but not like uh I don't know. Not like Phoenix from the X-Men. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Sure. Um so no um I'll put super powers. Um, okay. Uh, let's uh, let's include in that no aliens and oh, alien okay. technologies. Sure. Like, you know, if you want to use solar radiation, okay. If you <laughs> want to use kryptonite, not okay. Got it. Yeah. Because that's alien. Okay. Um. Did you say super villain or super villains? Um. I said the singular, but I'm okay if it would be plural. I, I I didn't really specify, but I want there to be at least one. Mm. His his anti-hero. Okay. That's fine. Uh obviously what I have to have here is a um romantic subplot. Got to <laughs> have it. Got to have the romantic subplot in this. Does he? Right. Does he or she? Do they get the, the their preferred gender type? <laughs> do they get them? I guess would be what I would say. Um. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. Um, I'm pretty good with most of those. Uh, I think we need like two more things. Two more things. Yeah, just uh, just ideas to throw out there. All right. All right. So. Uh, see um i'm thinking i'm thinking about how society would view superheroes of this time okay. and what what 19th century england would think um I'm thinking, I guess I'll just say, I'm thinking conflict with uh, the government. Oh, God. I almost deleted the whole thing. Um, conflict <laughs> with um, the uh, with the national government right. is something I want to see. Right? It doesn't have to be right. persistent. Um, it just the idea that um, the government and like so, so like I guess the king and the queen, I guess this time the queen, um, I don't like the queen uh, is, and the government just are not pot, uh, are not happy with the superheroes either their his methods or their methods and um, just you know that kind of sentiment like anti superhero campaign kind of stuff. Sure. Um. Anything you want to um, see or super badly? I don't want to see super badly. I like I, I didn't really put all, all that much brain power into what I wanted and did not wanted to see. Yeah, that's fine. I just thought, oh, this would be neat, and, and like that's about it. Uh, and they came up with superpower stuff uh, or superhero stuff. Um, so let's do. Um, no. Uh, No alias for the superhero. Like he's only the superhero. He doesn't Ooh. have like his secret normal life. Okay. No Clark Gantz. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, he is who he is, or they are who they are. Gotta get better yeah. at that. Um. Oh yeah, that's great. I think maybe I think. I'm... I think I might want to add one more thing to the no column. And then, like, uh, I guess, uh, like, he obviously he'll still have one. Yeah. Uh, for, for, like, dire need, but it's like, uh, I, I don't know, like, either we don't really focus on it. Yeah. Like, I, I don't want to focus on his normal life at all. I guess is what I really want. Yeah, say. so I'll say no focus on the alias. Yeah. Um, okay. I think I... I get it. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, get it. That's good. Um, I'm thinking... No... I was thinking of maybe of something about fighting. Okay. But I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, no kung fu? <laughs> no, I, I was actually thinking about... Almost only no having gun fighting? Maybe. Um, trying to think of something that would be cool or, or of interesting limitation. Um, maybe it would be better as a yes. I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna say other uh, European uh, supers. Okay. 
So there, there's other heroes. And villains. And so so it's right. going to take place in England. So the story will take yeah. place in Victorian England. But the appearance of other European supers could be known. Okay. All right. So they get to have, like, uh, mashups. Yeah. Mashup episodes. Yeah, totally. We, so we can cross-promote this. Nice. Cool. All right. Um, I'm okay with this palette. How about you? Uh, yeah. Awesome. I, I'd like to play to find out what happens. Awesome. So then the next part of Microscope is the first pass. And the first pass of Microscope means... Uh, you and I can make either a uh, period or an event. So I think with two people, we should maybe let's go once and then uh, let's we'll, we'll do the first pass twice. So we have four things down. Okay. All right. So you go, I go, you go, I go. All right. So the all right, the periods are the things on top, and then events are nested under the periods. Correct. Right? Events are thing are scenes or uh, not scenes. Events are, well, events that happen within yeah, a, a certain yeah. period. Within a period. Yes. That's a the stipulation of the event is that it happens within a period. Yeah. Right. All right. Yeah. Um, a uh, another key word is a period. Like you can't have an event crossing multiple periods. You can. Cannot. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. Let's have the period um, of. Uh, if you want, I'll make it. Sure. Just describe it. The, the coming of age period, and it's it's not like a literal like coming of age. Well, of course, there's a, you know time passing and a person coming of age, but it's it's his superhero ness coming of age. Uh, he he doesn't have it before, and it will have it after. Okay, um, so he has powers by the end of it. Yes, and not before. Uh, which is, yeah, after the hero is born somewhere. But I I guess there could be a period in between. So. Yeah. Okay. Because it's microscope, and you can always fit stuff in everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, this will be a light thing because I have to define light too, right? Mm-hmm. Um. So I'm gonna make a period. Um, that comes sometime after that, and I'm gonna call it the hunt. Um. England is after the superhero. Uh, they are wanted um, for something. And they are on the run. Uh, slash in hiding. So this is a time, um, some time in history, where... Uh, the superhero is, is has been either betrayed or wrongfully convicted, basically like Dark Knight style. Like they're, um, uh, what do you call it? A public menace. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. I don't know how to say it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's me again? Yes, back to you. Back to me. Um, let's do uh, before the hunt and after the coming of age. Uh, and the hunt is dark, is, by the way. The hunt is dark, all right. Um... So before the hunt is the period of uh, the nemesis, where our superhero and supervillain are like always just opposed to each other, uh, and that's 
Um, is this where the hero meets the... Do you want this to be where they meet, or they are in, like, one on... You know, they're in actively engaged? Uh, I guess I guess where they meet could be part of the period. Oh, okay. uh, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, it, it's, it's the period where they fight each other the most. Or, or maybe consciously fight each other the most. Like, you know, maybe uh, uh, when he's young and first, he, like, punches yeah. a bunch of thugs and that turn out to be working for him, but it, it's yeah. not really part of the period yet where he's like, ah, oh, he's behind the supervillain and, and mm -hmm. whatever. Um, it's, it's the arc in the book where he's against the one guy. I'm going to make an event under the nemesis. Uh, the Nemesis will as well be a, a dark period, I think. Uh, yeah, dark it's, period. It's hard yeah. to have a have a super Nemesis. Mm -hmm. Like anyone can beat up on thugs. <laughs> I'm gonna call it the Great London Heist. Um, I'm gonna say uh, the Nemesis. Um, takes on their biggest. Um, most audacious, um, robbery yet. Dark. All right. Awesome. All right, so that is the first pass. So now, um, Leafington, it goes to you to become the first lens and create the uh, the first focus. So um, do, you need, do you need a reminder of what the focus is? Uh, sure. Sure. Um, so the focus is the part of microscope. Um, it, it is sort of like the... It is literally the lens in which we will view our, our timeline. Um, the focus is going to be either a theme, uh, some kind of noun, really, where um, your, uh, your things that you make and the things that I contribute um, all have to somehow involve the focus. So a broad, like, thematic focus, like revenge or love story or something like that, um, that might fall under, like, a wider wider breadth of of periods or some or you know of that order as opposed to maybe picking like a person or or something intimate where that becomes a much more like vertical style kind of game where we get into something really really in depth all right um so i think i think for the start it'd be good to define what his powers are so i want to focus on the powers the powers Yes. Cool. Okay. Um, so since you are the lens, uh, it, in, it is your turn to create something. Uh, you have a special move that's called the double tap. Or at least that's what I call it. Um, you can create, uh, instead of just having the ability to create one thing, you can create two things if they are nested. And what I mean by that is that you can create a period with an event inside of it, or you can uh, or you can create an event with a period inside of it. With a period inside it? With the, oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. A, an event with a scene, scene inside of it. Correct. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, all right. So we'll make an event. Okay. Uh, under we... the coming of age. Yeah. Where um, the hero um, Sure. Where he, he meets the scientist. And, and I'll make a scene under that, that that defines it a bit more, I guess. Sure. Uh, but 
Uh, um, so a uh, so this scene can either be an all play scene where we both um, role play in it, or it can be a dictated scene where you could control it. Um, and the best advice I've ever heard about deciding which one you want to do is whether or not you have the answer to the question that you want to pose for a scene, since all scenes require a question that needs to be answered. So if you kind of know the direction and you kind of know what you're, you're trying to frame, then perhaps a dictated scene is the best way to do it. But if you honestly don't know, but just have a really good question, then do a all play scene. All right. So uh, I, th I think I want to uh, dictate it. Okay. To start with. Oh, did you say the, uh, the hero gets their powers from the scientist? Yes. Okay. And you're going to create a scene. Doo -doo -doo. Okay. So uh, the first thing you do is come up with a question. So what is this? What is the question of this scene? Right. So the question is uh is how he gets the powers and you said he uh intentionally sure let's, let's make him a he okay I, I think we've been been uh moving around it but let's let's just define him as a he sure sure uh i i, I don't think i said it def intentionally i think it's a default thing that i just call everyone he until i know otherwise uh, but that's, that's just weird culture. Yeah, game. man. But let's make him a he. Sure. Why not? Sure. Totally. So how does he get his powers? Um. So the next part is that you actually come up with a location and you kind of narrow out the the scene that you want to that you want to take place. Yeah. So, um, the the scene starts in uh in this alley where our hero just got beat up. Oh. Uh, uh, he has like a, he has like a nasty stab wound or something. And, and he like is fading in and out of consciousness. So it's like, he, he doesn't really know what's happened. So we as an audience don't get to really see what uh, everything that happens. Mm -hmm. Um, so then he meets his guy uh, who like who's like picking him up and he's like in a lot of pain as he's picking him up but he can can see that the guy is trying to help him so he's like not trying to fight him totally totally uh, and then we come to and we're in this this vat of of liquid and like you have this little panic attack because we we're like underwater submerged. yeah yeah submerged but we have this this thing on our face uh, and it's really disorienting mm -hmm. and then. Uh, this bright light uh, shines in our eyes and we wake up and we're lying down and uh, we lift our hands and we see that uh, like it's not our hand anymore it's like this this robotic hand like a steampunk uh, hand like like kind of steampunky because we're in like metal in England and, yeah but like it's a, like does it yeah, look like, like, like metal. a metal there's it looks no like an armor bones, gauntlet there's no more skin there's no more yeah no like it looks like a robot like you can see through parts of it and you're not oh. supposed to see through oh okay okay yeah like a bionic hand there's like yeah. tubes and wires and stuff like that and okay. like we inspected some more and there there's like more parts of it like like maybe his whole arm and like uh, the 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 scientist comes to him and is like, the operation was a success. Oh, so the powers, he, how does he get his powers? Um, so he gets his powers from uh, a scientific guess, operation. Cybernetic enhancement. I, I guess it's not cybernetic. Uh, what do you call it? I mean, maybe still. Steampunk kinetic? Yes, yeah, I, 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 I guess it's still like I did cybernetic. Yeah. Um, I think bionic is the term. Bionic? Sure. Yeah. Okay. 
Is this a is this a light or dark scene? Um, I I think it's light because like he was gonna die, but then he lives, mm. so it's light. Cool. All right. Uh, it comes to me, and. Um. Oh yeah, I got it. Got it. Uh, this goes under when the superhero is born. Okay. Um, and this is called the Omen. Ooh. And a uh, this is an event where a um, sign of prophecy. Um unfolds to the parents of the superhero to be um what do you call it pro prognosticating um pro uh profiting what do you do when you when you uh tell the future Exercising. yeah Uh, prophesizing um, his um, superhero dumb. God, I can't type. <laughs> Prophesying his superhero dumb. So, um, uh, parents, uh, a sign unfolds to the parents of the superhero to be prophesizing his superhero dumb. I say his powers and superhero dumb. So some sort of dark um, thing comes to them. Um, not war I guess it's a warning, but at the same time, it's also no. I think it's a light thing. It's it's a light event. Even though it's called the Yeoman. All right. So his his parents know that their their ch at, at least one of their children is destined to be um, a superhero and have some sort of strange powers. Okay. So now it comes back to you, and you can do your double tap thing again. Do it again. Mm hmm. Uh, um. I don't. I don't think I want to double. Uh, you don't have to. For this one, um, uh, I, I I think I'd like to make a another scene about the hero meeting the scientist. Sure. Uh, and this is like. Uh, this is after he like gets out of the surgery and he recuperates and he kind of learns how to basically use it but obviously you know sure he can go above and beyond after that mm -hmm. uh, this is, is this a dictated or all play scene i think we play this because i don't know okay how it's gonna be uh because uh i i want to find out what the hero and the scientist, what their relationship is like. After uh, the surgery? After the scientist does that thing to the hero. Like, is he okay with that? If he's not okay with that? Uh, What's the relationship between that hero and the surgery? Uh, and the scientist after the surgery. Sure. Um, so the next thing is where does the scene take place? Um, uh, I think it's still in in like this underground lab of uh, of the guy, and it has like Tesla coils and like sure twenty alchemy sets, like all boiling at the same time in all the colors of the rainbow. There's like the big vat that he used to be in that's like ominously empty now, but it's still like working. Mm-hmm. 
as if he's like maybe looking for someone else or maybe he'll put you back in who knows oh totally totally so um now that we have this uh location uh the next thing is to come up with characters for this scene so now as since it's your turn leafington um you can require up to two characters and as well as you can ban up to two characters I mean, the only thing we required are the hero and the scientist, and I don't think we need to ban Well, then you, you don't have to ban anyone, because if you're requiring a character, they have to be played, so it would be you and me doing the hero and the scientist. Pretty much. All right. Uh, um, so because, then... Uh, yeah. All right, then it's my choice uh, to pick who I want to be. You get to set the scene, but I get to choose the characters. Um, I will be the scientist. All right. Uh, I'll I'll be the hero then. Uh, let's give him a name. Just, okay. Just so we don't have to yeah. like talk around this, yeah. it anymore. I'll, the scientist's name is um, Morgan. Um, Morgan Chapel. All right. Mad scientist. Uh, we'll name the hero. Um, uh, Alexander. Uh, Harris. Sure. That's a, that sounds like a comic book name. Sure. Two first names. Well, they they should be like two first names is like if it's every comic, comic book. Names. Yeah. <laughs> but, Honestly, I know I I kind of feel like I should make all of the text here Comic Sans. <laughs> <laughs> and all of the scenes should be um, speech bubbles. See if that was really cool. And I yeah I would I would make all of these yellow or purple with the you know the that italics you know what I mean like in the corner of comic books yeah totally. so just pretend just for now pretend that's what it's doing so Alex Alexander Har uh, Harris uh, hero or I, I should be like now hero cool <sighs> excuse me yeah sorry um. So, uh, now we go uh, back and forth and describe what our characters are thinking. And uh, starting with me, um, my character is thinking, um, my, I'm so happy of my experiment on this nobody. Uh, I will finally be accepted into the Royal Academy of the Sciences again. And... and um, what do you call it? Not a tune. Um, what do you call it when a paladin has to um, fix himself? Like go on a quest. Oh, to... A tone? A tone. Thank you. Uh, a tone for his grandfather's um, sins against the Royal Academy. Jeez. Oh, um, all right. Uh, Alexander is thinking uh, can I do I still need this guy the scientist yeah okay um because he's a I think he, he wants to be independent of him but he's not sure if he can be got it so um I think we'll begin um, with one of my uh, attendees, you know, like one of my, my aides, one of my help, scientific helpers. Um, okay. Like, sees you start to move. I, you just got out of, you guys just got out of the surgery, right? So you're not, you're not um, in, you're not in one of those vats, right? No, no, no. Like, I was like on a, on a, on a hospital little bed or what mm, passes yeah for so it. like after yeah so we're like we're at the scene that wipes after you're you're through the surgery scene and you're in yeah. you're in a bed resting up right yeah um okay so i picture 
uh, my my female scientist colleague um, sees you stir and uh, okay. and like you're some servos or something go on you like the kind of like moving yeah. kind of stuff and uh, I think she drops her um, her thing of charts uh, her clipboard her clipboard yeah <laughs> and uh, yeah. and sh- she freaks out and is like oh he's he's moving he's moving I, sh- I I must I must go find the doctor um, all right and so, so yeah so she so runs off to get like, me yeah Alexander's like getting up he, there, there's like stuff like like stuck in him or on him like he's probably on some sort of breather thing yeah sure uh, he's like taking that off and like like getting free I don't know if he's restrained mm-hmm. uh, um it's your your call all right so let's say he was restrained a little bit because he tried to get up one time before. Okay. Uh, and and like he knocked some shit over because he was like just out of surgery and like in a lot of pain, but like he had this escape drive thing mm-hmm. uh, that was like getting him out. So he's like restrained a bit, but he he struggles with it, but then he like rips him off uh, his arms. Oh yeah, like he uh, well specifically. Okay. Because they were made for for people, but he's like stronger than people. Yeah. See, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, I was like, so like, are you, I'm picturing, yeah, like him him realizing his his changes or whatever, and like he tries to like break the chain, like the handcuff or you know whatever, or like whatever sort of leather, you know, like I imagine uh, like insane asylum leather straps or whatever, right? Like holding yeah. him down, and he just goes like, <laughs> and just like rips it off. Yeah. Yeah. And you like you hear like the snaps and like you hear like the rivet or like the bolt or whatever tumble onto the floor. Mm-hmm. Um, probably falling, and we see we see the rivet roll um, underneath the the table, or underneath the the bed, like where some of the paperwork from the clipboard fell. And uh, the camera's looking underneath the bed, and we see like the paper and we see the little bolt like roll on top of it and sit. And then we see like two black boots like come up and like underneath the bed. And so, like, standing oh, yes. over you while you're, like, examining yourself and stuff is the doctor. And uh, he has a uh, – Morgan has a super huge, like, smile on his face. Um, he looks kind of like Dr. Krieger from Archer, you know, mm-hmm. if you know that reference. Like, older older gentleman, like, mid-40s, um, red hair, yeah. uh, goatee. And he's like, wonderful. My, my experiment was a great success. How are you, my boy? Uh, and like, like, so like struggling with like stuff is like, I, it'd be better if all this crap was off me. Oh yeah. I feel, but I feel great now. You can let me go. Oh no. I assure you that's just the drugs that you're on my boy. Uh, you will probably <laughs> be in quite a bit of pain if you did that. Uh, I, I should highly recommend that you just, just get some rest. You've been through a lot. Um, and he's like, he's like acknowledging like, yes, yes, you're right. You're right. Uh, I have been through a lot, but he's still pushing on. Like, I, I really need to go. Uh, I can't stay here. Like he's been like kind of biding his time a little bit until he like felt okay. Cause before, like when he tried to get Um, up, like it was a disaster. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think Morgan I think Morgan doubles down. He's like, listen, I like, I'm 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 the doctor who saved your life. Like, you would be dead without me, without without all of these these um these parts that I made for you. You the per you were the perfect um person. Um, you know, you, you had the right biology for for everything, and it just un what how how providential was it that I I un, I stumbled upon your body. Uh, in the alley, um, after those horrible muggings, uh, the the rash of muggings that had been going on, um, and I I just I took you out of there. I implore you to stay here. Like, just just rest. You're you're okay. I I've already told your parents. Uh, I'm in correspondence with them that that you're you're recovering from from a wicked carriage accident. You're you're totally fine. Everything's okay. Uh. And 
he like looks at the doctor and goes like a liar and like pushes him but it's like really hard mm -hmm. oh yeah uh, I, I like fly like i you know, i do like a not like a wilhelm so scream but like through yeah the air. I, oh, I you, you, and you hit the tank and it breaks and like all this liquid like spills yeah out. like like my head like hits like the back of it and it like cracks the like the glass or whatever and starts pouring out some kind of liquid yeah um, i'm like unconscious it's great. So, like, Alexander is just like, uh, "There's a door. Let's just go to it." Yeah, I think and I like, think the um the lab assistants or whatever like just completely just cower, right? right. So yeah, he, he like takes the door and he goes for it. Uh, cool. So I think that would probably be the end of the scene, of of the of the the last frame of the comic of of our hero like leaving the 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 lab or or like whatever a door opening into blackness that leads outside of this room right yeah. so because that that defines the relationship so the relationship um is not antagonistic but um uh scientists still wants uh to help um but alexander um wants to leave and does so yep um so he's kind of spurned i guess would be the way of putting it uh light or dark um i think it's i think it's dark uh all right i think alexander uh would have probably been better off if he had more guidance from the scientists and the scientists definitely would have been better off mm. uh if uh, he could have shown off his invention. But I guess he has his data, but it's not the same, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, so, I think it's dark for both of them. Mm. Um. Okay. Uh, so, now I get to make uh, the legacy for this one. I'm thinking the legacy will be um, the bionics, uh, the bionic parts. Mm -hmm. Or I should just say, actually, they're robotic parts. Yeah. And um, we're going to do... Uh, Yeah, under coming of age. Okay. Um, uh, London, um, Royal Academy of Science unveils uh, world's first automatons and the idea is uh that um through the through the research and stuff of the of morgan that uh other researchers have been able to um figure out how to make like androids uh like android robots um mm -hmm. so like imagine more steampunky irobot kind of kind of looking dudes you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh that kind of stuff um uh based on the research and robotic parts um uh manufactured by morgan chapel london um debuts the world's first android automaton. Um, it's heralded as a uh, the end. Uh, the newspapers describe it as the um, swan song to to labor in the um, in factories and stuff. No longer mm -hmm. will men have to toil. Um, these 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 robotic research people will be able to do stuff for us. So. 
Uh, this is light. This is this is good stuff. I think. Um, sure. The last thing I will add to that is that I think. Um, I think Alexander's escape is part of the reason why. Um, why Morgan's information gets out to the public. Um, I think he. I think he mentions um, when he's sharing this research that he, you are a an experiment into building an android, and needs to see how how something works. Remember how um, I think of it. I'm tying it into how Alexander, or how Morgan was thinking how um, this was going to get him back into the graces of the Royal Academy of Science. Yeah. Um. That that this research that he was going to give them into robotics and cybernetics and stuff like that, or you know whatever whatever we said it was called um so i i assume that he does that at some point uh based on that robotic research so there we go so uh it's actually right on time it's about 9 57 so i think we're gonna take like a quick five minute break um for that is the hour break and we'll come back for hour two of microscope where we are developing a steampunk victorian england superhero story and so I uh, can't wait to see you guys when we get back and see what happens. So see you guys soon.